Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I want to show you how you can achieve multiple backstacks in a Jetpack Compose app. And first of all, we of course need to understand what multiple backstacks actually mean and in which scenario it makes a lot of sense to have such multiple backstacks. So let's take a look at this little app that we will build in this video. Here I have a simple bottom navigation bar and each of these tabs has 10 screens which we can visit when being on that tab. So for example, on this home tab, we can click next and we can go up to home 10. So each new screen has its own number. And normally, if we would now switch to a different tab here and do some navigation here, for example, and then go back to home, normally what we would expect is that it starts at home one again, because we visited the home route, which then results in always the same screen. However, here this does not happen. So it says home six, which was the most recent home tab or home screen that we actually visited. And that is what multiple backstacks mean. So each of these tabs we have in our bottom bar has its own backstack. And if we click next here, go to home seven, then go to settings, click three times on this button and then go back. And for example, go back on this page here. So click the back button or slide back then normally we would get back to the previously visited destination, which was the settings screen. But since we have our very own backstack here in home, we get back to home six. And you will find this pattern in most big apps out there, which have such a bottom navigation bar, or which have maybe some kind of tab layout with multiple categories of screens. For example, you will notice that in the YouTube app, you will notice that in Instagram, which all have such a bottom bar. And that is, of course, very good user experience. If you have some kind of video list here, for example, in the YouTube app, and you click on a specific post or so, but then go to the settings, then you also expect that you get back to the post by clicking on home, because that is where you left it at. And in order to build this, let's dive into an empty Jetpack Compose Android Studio project and start right away. On the one hand, we first of all need some kind of a wrapper which uh, describes a bottom navigation item. Now I won't go into the details of implementing a bottom navigation view here because uh, I have a separate video about that on my channel already. But in the end, when it is about implementing a bottom navigation bar, then we need something like a bottom uh, navigation item, which on the one hand has a title, so the text of that item. Then we want to have an unselected icon, which is an image vector in Compose, and a selected icon. So that is typically just the filled icon variant of the unselected icon, which is just the outline. And then we could just create some kind of list. I'll leave that up to you, how you want to, or what kind of tabs you want to have in the bottom bar. I paste this items list here, which just consists of these three items that I had before. So we have three bottom navigation items, home, chat, and settings. And for the icons, I just used yeah, the, the default icons from the uh, material design library. So on the one hand home, but the filled one for the selected icon variant and the same icon, but in outline for the unselected icon. Feel free to just write this off or copy paste it from uh, my GitHub down below, but let's now go on with implementing the bottom navigation bar. So typically when implementing a bottom navigation bar, we put that in a scaffold because it already reserves the spot for that bar. So let's have a scaffold as a root element. And then here in the scaffold parameter list, we can have a bottom bar which will place the bottom bar exactly where we want it. A bottom bar in Material 3 is called Navigation Bar. Here we get a row scope in which we need to initialize or in which we need to create and define how such a bottom navigation item looks like. For that, we just want to loop over our items list we described down below. So for each, for each item, and for each of these items, we want to have a bottom uh, navigation bar item, it's called. Here we need to say whether that's selected or not. So it is selected if we obviously are on that tab and it's not selected if we aren't. How do we now know whether that's selected or not? Well, for that, we need to have our very initial navigation set up so we can actually check if the route which we're currently on is the same as the item's title. So we'll just call our routes home, chat and settings. And then we can check if the current item's title is the same as our route. And for that, we need to add the navigation library. So let's go to our Gradle app file, scroll down, and here have an implementation function, which will add the navigation. Oh, what is it? Navigation compose something like that. Navigation compose, oh, that's the Hilt variant. This one here. Android X navigation, navigation compose. Synchronize now, and then want to go back to main activity. Because on the one hand, 
We now need a nav controller. That is what we always need when we implement Compose Navigation with the um, traditional way of the normal Compose Navigation library. And here in this case, we won't just have a normal nav controller, but rather a root nav controller. Because when we want to have multiple backstacks, then we also need to have multiple nav controllers because we need to kind of control each backstack individually. And for that, each backstack obviously needs its own nav host and nav controller that is associated to it. And the job of this root nav controller is just to navigate between our different categories, between our different bottom bar tabs. This root nav controller does not have the job to navigate within a tab here, so from home six to home seven, for example, but it does have the job to navigate to chat, for example. And in order to check which tab is now selected, we can use this root nav controller to observe its nav backstack entry by root nav controller that gets back or current backstack entry it's called current backstack entry as state so that is just a compose state which updates as soon as we navigate and then we can just check the route of the newly visited screen and compare it with the title of this item so here in our navigation bar we can have a val is selected and that's equal to item dot title dot lowercase if that is the same as our nav backstack entry dot um, destination dot route. So if the destination's route is the same as our title in lowercase, then we know that the item is selected and we can pass this value here to the selected boolean of this navigation bar item. Then we also need some kind of label, which is the text for each item. Here we can just say the text is equal to the title of each item. We need some kind of icon which we want to show for each navigation bar item. Here, this is dependent on whether the item is selected or not. So let's just have a normal icon with an image vector. And the image vector depends on whether the item is selected or not. If it's selected, we want to use the item selected icon, selected icon, and otherwise item unselected item, uh, icon. For the content description of that icon, we can just say null or just the title of each item. And last but not least, we obviously need some kind of behavior when we click on this navigation bar item. And that is really where the magic happens, because when we click on an item here, then we need to perform the navigation to the other nav graph, to the other, not only nav graph, but to the other nav host. And what's also very important when doing this is that we typically don't want to keep a very large backstack because if we navigate 10 times within this home tab, 10 times within this chat tab and settings tab, then we have a really large backstack which gets saved and which is all in memory, but we rather only want to keep the backstack we're currently at active and restore the other ones when we get back to them. But luckily this logic can be very easily implemented with uh, an F controller reference. And this is exactly what we want to do in this on click. So as soon as we click on a navigation item, we want to use our root nav controller and we want to navigate to that item, that title, that lowercase, which is just the same name as the route we will choose. And then here by opening this block of code, we get this nav options builder in which we can just kind of configure our navigation action a little bit. And again, these navigation actions are really only corresponding to navigating between tabs. So from settings to chat or to home or back to chat, but not within a tab. And therefore, for the reason I said that we don't want to keep the whole back stack in memory, we want to pop it. So when we switch the tab, we want to pop up to the root nav controller dot graph dot start, uh, find start destination actually, which obviously finds the start destination and refer to its ID with the difference that we want to save the state here. So we set save state equal to true in this extra block of code. So this will pop the previous um, graph, the previous screen. So if we have um, chat five here and we go to settings, then it will actually pop the previous um, the previous five chat screens from the backstack, but it will still save the state. So if we go back to chat, it will restore that. So we still have the old um, screen history and we can also go back here um, and then actually get to chat four, chat three and so on. Then what we would also like to have is launch single top, set that to true. That will make sure that we can't um, just navigate to the same item where we're currently at. So if we are on chat and click on chat, 
we just want to stay there. We don't want to just uh, push another chat destination on top of this back stack. That is what we achieve with a launch single top. So if the um, if we would if we're trying to push a screen on the back stack, which is already at the top of the back stack, we don't do anything. And last but not least, when we go back to a previous destination where we've saved the state, then we also want to restore it. So we set restore state to true. And this block of code is really the whole magic behind multiple backstacks. The um, next part will be to actually have content here. Right now we don't have any nav host where we also assign our root nav controller. That is what belongs inside of this scaffold block. But as I said, when we have multiple backstacks, each single tab each single bottom navigation destination should also have its own nav host. So let's actually create that in separate composables. So for example, the home nav host here and down here, let's ignore that. We have a nav host and this nav host obviously needs a nav controller. And since we have our very own navigation logic just within our home tab, we also want to have our very own home nav controller which is um, responsible for only that. So remember nav controller, just like we also initialized our root nav controller. And then we pass that here and use the start destination home one. So we'll just have a loop here to initialize 10 screens, just to have a little demo here for i in one to 10. We will then add 10 of these composable destinations. The route is home and i, so starting at one, it will be home one, home two, and so on. And in here, we will then have um, the option to actually create a composable. For that, I just want to have a very generic screen composable, which you can reuse for all these screens. So comp generic screen. I don't know why Android Studio is always having issues here. Um, here we want to have the text. So whether that's home one, home two, and so on. And we actually also want to have a lambda when we click on the next button. So on next click, like this. All we really put into this generic screen is a column which centers a text and a button. So modifier, modifier.filmx size. And we want to have horizontal alignment, alignment that center horizontally. And the vertical arrangement is arrangement dot center. Inside of this column, we are going to have a text as a set, which is just the text that we passed. Let's have a little bit of spacer, modifier height, 16 dp, alt enter to import dp. And last but not least, um, let's have a button. When we click that button, we call and trigger our on next click lambda. And the text just says next. Okay, we can then use the generic screen composable here in our home nav host in the composable generic screen. The text is just home and our value of i, so home one, home two, and so on. And on next click, if we are actually, or if i is actually less than 10, so if we're not at the last screen, then we want to take the home nav controller and navigate to the next page, so to home and then i plus one, so just to the next page. And this is how our home tab would look like. Of course, in a real app, you wouldn't have a loop to create these screens, but rather have different of these composable blocks with actual screens um, where the user can navigate to. But this should be totally sufficient for our needs to understand what an asset, uh, what a what a what multiple backstacks actually mean. Let's copy this, paste it down below for the chat nav host. Chat nav host. Um, we can also just select all that, hit Command and R to rename home to chat, replace all, and also this one here, which is in uppercase. And then we can do the same with our final settings nav host, settings nav host, and also select that. Here we want to rename chat to settings like this, replace all, rename this to settings, and we are good. For some reason, Android Studio complains, but this is just a bug in Android Studio. Um, it doesn't realize that we actually renamed this. I don't know. Let's just go up here in our scaffold. So instead of the block of our scaffold. And here, what we will have is 
another nav host. You guessed it. <laughs> this nav host will now take in our root nav controller. So this will coordinate the navigation between all of our individual nav hosts, which just coordinate the navigation within a tab. And here, start destination can be home. So our home tab is showing up at first. And we're going to have a composable block for home. And all this will contain is our home nav host. That is really how this works. We then copy paste this two more times. Once for uh, the chat, chat nav host. And for settings, oops, settings. We have our settings nav host. So, so each individual page of our root nav host now has its own single nav host with its own nav controller, which you can use to just navigate within the back stack of a single tab on yeah, in our app. And I don't know why it complains here, probably because I didn't use this padding value, which is quite stupid. Padding, if we give it a name, yes, then the error at least goes away and goes to this padding variable. Let's ignore that for this case. And I think we are ready to launch this and try out if it now shows the same as I showed you previously. And now it seems like there is a compile time error scaffold. Okay, probably because it wants us to add this experimental API, which is super stupid. Why does it fail at compile time because of that? Should be a warning, but shouldn't prevent building, right? Let's try this again. Yes, now the app is launching. Home one, let's try this out and let's go to home three. That is working fine. If we now go to chat, that is working. We have chat one. Let's go to chat five, maybe. If we now go back to home, we should see home three and not home one. And that is exactly what's happening. Very cool. If we now go back, we should get back to home one. So home two, home one, go back. Then the app is closed because the previous back stack was also popped from the back stack. Very cool. So that is how you implement multiple back stacks with Compose Navigation. If we go back here, then everything is working perfectly fine. Here we get back to chat four and so on. So if you have some kind of bottom navigation view, bottom navigation bar in your Compose app, and you want this behavior, it's very likely you want this behavior if you have that in your app, then yeah, now you know how to do that. And if you like these videos, but you feel a little bit unsure about the code you write, and you don't really know if the way your code is right or not, and you're just a little bit afraid of whether you're making major mistakes you just don't know about, or if everything is absolutely cool, then my 10-week mentorship program might be something for you. In these 10 weeks, we will be working together very closely. We're going to build an app, you will get code reviews, and you can always ask me any questions that come up when building that app. So if that sounds good to you, check the first link in this video's description to apply for this 10-week program. And other than that, thanks for watching this video. I wish you an amazing rest of your week and see you back in the next one. Bye-bye.